Hello and welcome to another episode of Crazy Flippin' Mom. I am your host, Confusion, <laughs> Emily. And today we're talking about merchant fulfilling Amazon orders. People will say MF for short, or what else is the other one? Merchant fulfilled, I don't know, there's another one to it, I can't think of it right now. Merchant fulfilled orders, and if you're brand new to Amazon, remember you can sell things two ways through Amazon. One is shipping it to a warehouse and they fulfill the orders for you. Um, and the second way is to fulfill the orders straight to the customers yourself. So that's what we're going to talk about today. When I got started on Amazon, I was, well, when I really got started, it was a disaster, but that's a different story. I was focusing on merchant fulfilling orders really because I didn't know it sold over there and it was a big risk to blindly put products into a box and send it off. And I just wasn't sure yet, new to the platform, what's gonna sell, what's not. And I couldn't afford to lose money. So instead I went to the store and I got some products like these Wilton Sprinkles, I listed them. And then if they sold great, I'd go get some more. So just a very low risk way of selling. Um, and this was also pre-COVID, pre-quarantine, and I don't really feel like merchant fulfilled anything was talked about much there. There was not a lot of information. Uh, it was really making money FBA because you can scale that way. Uh, so it was kind of a shot in the dark for me, but I do feel like that quarantine time period changed things dramatically and things have shifted still to this day. And you can make great money merchant fulfilling. Now I do a lot of holiday seasonal products, merchant fulfilled, that's quick. And I like doing this for a couple of reasons. One is I'm gonna get my money faster instead of putting it in a box, shipping it UPS, and maybe FC transferring all over the place and then getting checked in. I'm gonna list it and sell it today and see my money way faster than doing it the FBA way. And of course, pros and cons each way. That's the number one reason you merchant fulfill. You want that fast money. It just, a lot of this, like we're coming up to Valentine's and Easter. It doesn't make sense two weeks before the holidays to try to get out an FBA shipment when you can fulfill the order today. You might miss the whole holiday altogether if you try to do an FBA shipment. So just listing it now and selling it now is sometimes the way to go. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like for me. Some of the things that have worked throughout the past four years, merchant fulfilling orders. For the first two years, I would say we were mainly merchant fulfilling orders. It was just, we didn't have a lot of cash flow, uh, So all of our profits we were making on Amazon, it was slow. You know, we we're taking money out to buy milk and groceries, putting some stuff back in, but we did really need that steady, fast flip of money. And so merchant fulfilling was it for us. So here are the things we use, and I will link all the products below. And you can imagine after four years, if you've been reselling, you probably have all this crap laying around. You know, it just kind of grows with time. Do you still, do I need to have all this? No, but I'll tell you some essentials and then all the fun extras we have for merchant fulfilling orders. So first obvious one is we have a wall of boxes. I will show you what that looks like. We've accumulated from USPS to just your normal uh, brown paper box, brown paper, brown cardboard box. Okay, here is our one of our shipping rooms, our wall of boxes. I don't think I said anything about this resin paper we get at the hardware store. I love this stuff. We also have bubble wrap, of course, but this stuff is pretty heavy duty, fills the box as well. Here's our box shelves though. It's just kind of grown throughout the years. We also have, let's see over here, we have UPS, USPS boxes, I'm sorry. We, I think we also have a locker of um, USPS boxes. The express box, so just a little bit of everything we've kind of accumulated throughout the past couple years. Some tape down here, all the extras. My best tip for boxes is look for a local supplier. That will be way easier when you find a new product than having to run to Walmart or Staples or someplace and hopefully pay up maybe, but hopefully find something. So first look for a local supplier. We have a ton of random boxes from that. When I was selling on eBay and Poshmark, I was not necessarily eBay, but really Poshmark. I was doing USPS boxes. So we have a huge supply from that. We don't usually use them like it's not, it's usually UPS, okay? So 
we're not really using the USPS boxes, but, but it is great when we can use them. It just doesn't happen. You, UPS prices are super competitive. So we have a shelf of boxes. We also have mailers that look like this. And again, something that I miss from the Poshmark days is the cute mailers. These are really simple, nothing to it. And we also have some paper ones, all the sizes. I have them over here, Gigantor. We go through a lot of these, these, and I love these. Um, so you need a good supply, uh, and you, or you need a good source. I know tons of places online. I'm not even going to get started. I'm sure you have your favorite to order supplies from having a stack of mailers. And a lot of times these sites will have like a multi-bag is a great idea. Second, when you FBA products, most of those products need to be poly bagged. And this is kind of a, whatever you want to do sort of thing. Some people, like to poly bag all their merchant orders. We do. I do a lot of food, a lot of candy, and I don't want it to break open. I always think, what if it's sitting on a doorstep in the rain? So here's what our poly bag will look like. And if you are FBAing FBA stuff that needs to be poly bagged, it needs a suffocation warning and it needs this seal. So you can't use those Ziplocs that you would reuse for the Poshmark days, something like this. So most of our stuff is going in. Again, we have loads and loads of sizes that this works well and I will also say I just sold like a tent or something similar it's crazy we have really big bags like this and some of these products I like to just they probably don't need to go in a, in a separate bag but I do like it um we have really long ones of these and they will go and I'll wrap them up just so they have a little bit more protection really oblong we've done pool ladders we bag them um, just to like maybe an extra layer of protection. And also if they're sitting on a step, you don't want somebody to take it. Um, so what's next? Okay. Do you ship stuff that has the price? Of course we do. And I'm trying to find something that has the price around me. And of course I cannot, but we have these holographic stickers. They work great for our prices. We have all different sizes. Of course, cover your prices. Do not leave those prices showing. We also cover like walmart.com if it's Walmart specific products. Um, you just don't want people to think you're drop shipping, but also like if you got something in the mail with the price on it, that's not great. <laughs> okay, something else I use uh, is Whiteout. I really enjoy using Whiteout. I don't know why. So sometimes there's certain products that have like a white background and then black uh, pricing and I'll white it out first and then put a sticker on just so you can't see any... This is probably overkill. It's just something I like to do and it makes me feel like this product, like the sticker's not gonna come off, right? So I have white out. Is that necessary? No, but the holographic stickers, yes. You can also print F and SKU stickers that you use to cover barcodes and use to send shipments in FBA and use those. If you use Inventory Lab, they actually have a um, merchant section and you can print merchant specific F and SKU labels. You can also print those labels straight from Seller Central. So a lot of different options. There's no, probably no right or wrong way, just whatever you like to do. Okay, here's another product. Do I use it a lot? I don't do a lot of topicals. I don't do a lot of beauty. And you can see how much I've used it because it's all jankity. But we use these this gripper tape. And if you get on Amazon, there is one called Gripper. This is like the off brand. And it's called Sealer. We also have different sizes of these. But the idea is to, if you get a topical or beauty product, um, it's going to go on, like it would go on something like, you know, to make sure spray bottles. I have noticed a lot. I do, I do sunscreens and a lot of times there's no seal on any part of it, right? It's just the lid. And this is great. I'll wrap it around there just to make sure it doesn't come loose. We also have the clear round sticky labels that look more, I would say professional, but they don't stick very well. So this one, the sealers are great, especially if you're doing wet products. There's just so much, right? Is this completely necessary? No, but if you are shipping beauty, you do need to make sure that it's going to make it there. Okay. Brandon got me this. Is it necessary? No, not on my necessary list, but it is these brown labels 
Um, and it just covers any writing or any information that's already on the box. So it looks clean again. You do need to use new packaging materials on Amazon. So um, again, a product that once in a while I'll pull out and use, but not completely sure why I have it. Something that I do use a lot is these hazmat stickers. If you're shipping beauty products, um, chlorine, aerosol cans, I mean, it's a whole list, right? It needs to be going ground. It needs to be sealed in a box, all those things, but also you need to um, put a label to let the people know that it's hazmat. If you have never fulfilled an order on any platform, I'll just run through kind of what this looks like. So the order will come through, we'll print off the label. At one point, we were also printing off packaging slips. So here's pretty much what I would do. We were printing off packaging slips, which just shows you what the person bought. I'm gonna do this. The, in, the information, like when you, sometimes you get them in your packages, that's just a run, your name and number, how much you paid. We don't do packaging slips anymore. Um, does, does Amazon do packaging slips? I don't think so. I, at one point in the merchant list, it said it was needed, but after like a year or so, it's a lot of extra paper. I, I'm not sure the benefit. You can tell me if you know. Um, so here we go. We have our padded mailer. We would stick it in. This is pretty much what it looked like. You could also use like a small 444 box, I suppose. Um, but I do like using these padded mailers because you're probably going to get your cheapest rates. You do need to make sure though, UPS can be a little bit picky with these bags. You need to give good rates. And actually when we're doing this, um, we always have a measuring tape close. That is a necessity. So this is going to be like a 7, 8, 2. But when we input the numbers on Amazon, Seller Central, or wherever you're buying your labels, we would go up on one of the sizes just so they don't backcharge us because UPS will backcharge you. Do not try to skimp them. They will come for all their money. And usually you're paid, you have to pay extra then. Um, so just make sure, I, I would honestly recommend going up, right? So what else? Okay, we also have on every shipping station, we have scales. This is my original scale I bought when I first started selling clothes. We still have it, it works great. We have a floor scale and we have some scales on the desk. It's like they're everywhere now, but you do need a good scale um, pretty much when you're putting in all your dimensions and all your products. Amazon is nice because once you fulfill this order one time, uh, those calculations will stay for your next order. So you don't have to measure and weigh each time. If you forget, they'll just always be there calculated, refreshed. All you have to do is print the label and then you can bulk ship really easy too. So I did hazmat stickers. We use these tape guns, also not a necessity, just something that we like, especially when we're doing bigger FBA boxes. I feel like these are the best. And this three inch tape, I love it. I think that's it. We have our measuring tape. I also have this roll of plastic that I bought from Walmart, obviously. Haven't even opened it yet. So we did cat food a while back, like cans, loose, like a lot of loose products. You don't wanna just stick a case pack of 12 in a bag. At least I don't, and they're all jostling around. It makes the whole shipping process harder. Um, so what I would do, and this is taking forever, but I plastic wrap those together. An extra step, yes, but it kind of just made every other step a little bit easier. So I have this still laying around. I don't do a ton of cans. I'm usually thinking when I'm looking for a product and when I'm researching how difficult the prep is going to be. And that plays into whether I buy it or not. I don't want to be doing all sorts of crazy stuff to my product to get out the door. I just know that I'm going to put it off. I'm not going to do it. And then by the time I do it, I lost the price because I waited too long. So I try to find products that I know I'm going to jump on and do it fast and get out the door. But this is sitting at your Walmart if you do need it last minute. It's just a couple bucks, plastic wrap. I will link all our stuff below. Oh, and let me show you our printers. And before I leave, I'll also show you our box shelf. We have a Dymo printer here. Am I going to be able to show you? Man, and I want to say these are getting hard to find. Is it the Dymo 450 label writer? 
did I read that they are like discontinuing this line? But we do have this Dymo to print F and SKU labels. So it's going to be the little labels that go on your packages. Or I'm sorry, go on the product. This one might be harder to find, but I'm sure you can find a similar one that can print the labels as well. I do like the Dymo because it works with Inventory Lab. Again, Inventory Lab is not something that I'm necessarily repping. They're a product I or a company I've used in the past, but they do work well printing labels right to your Dymo. We also, for the last like three years, have used Zebra printers. They're huge. It's plugged in right now. Huge. When you go to the hospital, that's what's sitting on the desk usually. We loved it. Ours are now too dated and just too costly to maintain. So as of yesterday, we just switched to a Rolo printer. So I printed maybe like 40 labels on the Rolo. It's a printer. It works fine. I just want it to work when it's supposed to work. That's my main thing. My husband's main complaint about the Rolo is it's so lightweight. The, the Zebra is heavy duty. You, and my husband is also big. So maybe he feels when he rips the labels, he's gonna like shoot the Rolo across the room. It works. I don't know if I'm, I'm not the go-to for printer machines, <laughs> anything like that. All I can tell you is it works. <laughs> it seems to be working fine. Um, I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this sort of content, you find it helpful, please share with your friends, like this video, subscribe. I would appreciate it. Until next time, have a great day.